Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new fantasy booking video for you guys. And today, we are getting into WWE Survivor Series 2020 Brand Warfare going down on Sunday night. Pretty hyped for the show. I think the card's pretty stacked, in my honest opinion. I'm actually looking forward to all the matches. And, uh, you know, that's usually not the case for main roster pay-per-views. But if you guys don't know how these videos work, basically, the idea behind this video is that I am in charge of WWE. Vince McMahon walks up and hands the keys over to me and says, Trey, what the hell do you want to do? You're in charge tonight. You, Whatever you say goes, this is exactly how we're going to book it going forward. You get full control over who wins, who loses. You tell me what you want, Brad, we're booking it. So that is how these videos work. We're going to fantasy book this thing and just see what the hell goes down. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much how the video works. So let's go ahead and get into what we're going to be doing here today with our fantasy booking. I guess we can start things off with the undercard matches. So for our first matchup, guys, we have Bobby Lashley and Sami Zayn, right? We got the U.S. Champion versus the Intercontinental Champion champion and to be honest with you in the eyes of WWE Bobby Lashley is probably worth a lot more than Sami Zayn. You guys know that Vince McMahon loves big muscle men but if I were booking things I would actually have Sami Zayn overcome the odds the big powerful Bobby Lashley. You could have a really good like Brock Lesnar versus small guy style going on with this matchup and I would I would say Sami Zayn gets the victory somehow. You guys know that Sami Zayn's been using a lot of mind tricks and things in the ring Eddie Guerrero like and I would have him do the same thing here. I don't know what he could come up with but something creative in that aspect to pick up the win. You know, you, when you're a smaller guy like this, going up a big Goliath type guy like Bobby Lashley, you're going to have to use your brain to get the victory. That's how I book it. Sami Zayn gets the upset victory over Bobby Lashley. So it would be 1-0 to zero Smackdown to Raw. It, even though I can already see this thing going 3-3, three, three, you guys know that how they like to do it where, you know, Raw has a, you know, they keep scoreboard Raw versus Smackdown, but there's nothing on the line, so it's like, you know, this is stupid. I wish there was something to wrestle for or something. They could get creative with it, but they're not gonna. But yeah, I, that, that that mega. I, I'm guessing that it's going to go 3-3, but anyways. Our next matchup on the card, guys, is going to be the Tag Team Warfare. And this, for me, is actually going to be a banger. I'm really, really looking forward to this matchup. We got the Street Profits taking on the New Day in a Tag Team matchup. This one should be Liquid Fire. I mean, there's no damn doubts about it, man. I'm so much looking forward to this matchup here. So if I had the New Day going up with Street Profits, as much as it pains me to say, guys, I got to go with the Street Profits. I would have the Street Profits go over the New Day, not really handing over the keys to the kingdom, but, you know, just giving them a pat on the back saying this team is legit and I think this is what the Street Profits need. I feel like a lot of their tag team championship reign, especially when they were on Raw, it was just a bunch of gimmicks and a bunch of garbage playing mini golf, doing dumb stuff with ninjas, and it just wasn't taken seriously. I think in this matchup, you could really do them a lot of good, putting them over the New Day, longest reigning tag team champs ever, first ballot Hall of Famers when it's all said and done. You could really put the Street Profits over right here by giving them the victory and letting them upset the New Day here, so I'm going to go Street Profits over the New Day is how I I would book it. So it'd be 2-0 SmackDown at this point on the night. For the next matchup, guys, we have the women. We have Sasha Banks and Asuka. This match is going to be absolutely fire. There's no doubt about it. I mean, when you got two of the best women in the entire world in the industry of professional wrestling going head-to-head -head right here, no doubts about it. Asuka and Sasha Banks is going to slap. Now, this one's a really tough one for me simply because I know in my mind, like, I have SmackDown pretty much sweeping the board right now, and I really want to pick them. Like, SmackDown should be the favorite, except for maybe Bobby Lashley and maybe the New Day. I feel like, for the most part, SmackDown's the favorite in every category because they just, they're they they're doing better right now, man. Like, in every aspect. Their women's team is is absurdly better. Their, their tag teams are very similar. Sami Zayn versus Bobby Lashley. I'm pretty sure Bobby Lashley's probably going to get the victory, but that's not what we're doing in this video. I'm fantasy 
booking. And in this match right here, I feel like Sasha Banks has more momentum than Asuka, and therefore she would win. But I don't really want to fantasy book Asuka winning, so it looks like SmackDown's going to be 4-0. and And if I were calling the shots, I would have Sasha Banks defeat Asuka. I feel like, you know, she's been waiting on a really strong reign forever. Similar to how we had it with Bayley back in the day. You guys remember I would always say, you know, Bayley needs this win. Bayley needs this win. Well, in this case, it's Sasha Banks. She really, really needs this win. So I'm going to go with Sasha beating Asuka. And that's just the that's just how the cookie crumbles, Brad. Now, next up, guys, we have the men's main championship. You got Drew McIntyre, newly crowned WWE champion over Randy Orton, and then you have the big dog Roman Reigns. Now, again, how do you... Pre like, Drew McIntyre just won the championship, right? He just won back the championship, so he really doesn't need to lose. But since he just won it back, couldn't it wouldn't really hurt him that much to lose, right? Roman Reigns has got all the momentum in the world. He's probably the hottest act in wrestling right now. And so I have to go with Roman Reigns. I can't not have Roman Reigns win here. Puts me in a position where I have to book it that way. I literally cannot book against Roman Reigns right now. Everything he's doing on TV, he needs to be on top of the world. The way they're going right now, this is absolute fire. And I have to uh, I have to go with Roman Reigns, man. Like, I know it's SmackDown across the board. It's like, oh, just SmackDown on the table. Forget about the brand supremacy. Forget about, you know, Raw losing all these matchups. I'm just going based on what they're doing on their own brands. And don't, don't really try to think about the scoreboard. Because if you think about the scoreboard, it's like, oh my god, he's just picking all SmackDown. But I'm legit. I just don't see how Raw can win some of these matchups. And you could have New Day beat the Street Profits. You could have Bobby Lashley beat Sami Zayn. And I think it's probably going to go that way. But in the premise of this video, again, I have to go Roman Reigns. It just makes way too much sense. Roman Reigns would have to get the victory here. And another point goes to SmackDown. But forget about the scoreboard. Now up next, guys, this women's match. Let's set up all these John Brown figures. So for your Raw and SmackDown teams for the women, guys, I mean, this Raw team is, oh, bro, like, good God. I think each woman has their own individual talents, but as far as talents that I like and talents that I appreciate and, like, enjoy to watch, it is just not happening, bro. I do not like pretty much, I like Peyton Royce outside of that. No. It, like, dude, this team right here, uh-uh. Absolute nothing. Just not good, Brad. I mean, this Raw team just, I, I absolutely just, I don't know, man. How can you not pick Team SmackDown? How can you not pick Team SmackDown for this? They have Bianca Belair, one of my favorite women. You got Liv Morgan on there. You got Ruby Riot. A lot more talent over here on the right, and we don't even know the last two members yet. I think we're supposed to find out tonight on Friday Night SmackDown, so that will be a thing. You know, as of recording, at time of recording, we don't know who the last two members are going to be, but I have to, I, again, I don't want to go full Team SmackDown sweep, but but SmackDown's team is clearly better. It's clearly better. It's clearly better, and I don't even know who the last two are. So I'm going to go with Team SmackDown, and Bianca Belair is the sole survivor, no doubts about it. It should not go any other way. I think it'd be pretty good for storyline-wise if Lana got a, a few fluke victories, you know, because her whole team doesn't trust her. I think I would probably fantasy book that in there. Since that's the way they're going, I wouldn't have started off with that storyline, but since that's the position that we're at, I would probably have Lana get a few fluke victories and be like, yeah, see, I can do some ish, but Bianca Belair would be the sole survivor in in my honest opinion, and that's how we're going with it. And for the main event, guys, we have the Raw vs. SmackDown traditional 5v5 men's match between Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. You got your respective teams here. AJ Styles, Matt Riddle, Sheamus, Keith Lee, and Braun Strowman taking on Rollins, Owens, Uso, Trash Corbin, bitch. and then a to-be-determined. Now, I'm not sure if tonight they're having a matchup to determine that last spot, but we're going to just forget about that for a moment, okay? Just consider that it is a mystery partner. Consider that, you know, that's just what we're doing. So if you guys did not know, coming up this Sunday at Survivor Series. It will be November 22nd, 2020. Well, 30 years earlier, on November 22nd, 1990, The Undertaker made his WWE debut. And so, here at this event, I, I, I'm fantasy booking it right here. And I think this is probably what they're going to do, but this would be my my blind reaction, my blind fantasy booking right here. How bittersweet would it be? How, how beautiful would it be written? You couldn't write it any better. 30 years later, same pay-per-view as his debut. 30 years later, the last mystery partner for the team of SmackDown, a brand that Undertaker has represented over his career, a brand that he kept alive for a while. The mystery partner in this thing, again, given that there's no announcement for this spot, but I'm pretty sure, didn't Big E have this spot and then they take the spot away? I'm pretty sure, this is how I'd book it, the mystery partner will be the dead man. The mystery partner will absolutely be the Undertaker and he will come out and he will be either the sole survivor or he will help his team to victory and you can do it one or two ways. Now, honestly, I would probably end it here because you guys know that what we've had and everything like that. But what if after the smoke settled, after a banger of a match, the Undertaker's a sole survivor, or maybe Undertaker just plays a big role in helping his team win? The lights go out, and you know who appears on the Titan Tron, Brad? Ah! 
None other than the Fiend Bray Wyatt rises from the ashes, appears on the Jumbotron, attacks the Undertaker, and challenges him to a match. So that's your two options right there. You could either have the Undertaker retire 30 years later, probably the better option, or you could have him have one more match versus the Fiend to ride off into the sunset. I don't care when you book the match for. It doesn't really matter, but you have two different endings right there. Which one would you guys rather see? Would you rather see the Undertaker finish it off 30 years later at Survivor Series and, you know, ride off into the sunset with this last final? Final Survivor Series matchup 30 years later to the date? Or would you rather, after all the smoke is settled, The Fiend come on the screen and we get the fantasy matchup of Undertaker versus The Fiend one last time? It wouldn't really matter to me. I honestly probably would go with the Survivor Series matchup. As cool as Undertaker versus The Fiend would be, it wouldn't be what it could have been in the past. So for that reason, I would probably go with the Survivor Series matchup because you guys know we're not going to get The Undertaker that we've all grown to love over the years. We're going to get the, the, the old Undertaker, obviously. The one that can't really go all that well in more like he used to and I am a huge fan of The Undertaker but I would much rather see him just get his moment here at Survivor Series and end it right there in beautiful fashion storybook ending winning for his team 30 years later to the date and that's how I fantasy book the show and yes that would complete the uh if you want to go a step further that would complete the sweep of the night Smackdown would completely sweep Monday Night Raw and maybe you could do something cool with that you could do some fantasy booking off of that Raw's in shambles the big dog look what the big dog has done that's another thing to add to Roman's character my brand went undefeated. Look at us. We're the shit. But anyways, guys, before we get out of here, I do want to give a random shout out. And this shout out is going to go to Undrifted Pop from our last from our last video. If you guys would like a shout out in a future video, be sure to comment something down below and leave a like. But he says, I can't wait for a Dominic and Eddie two pack. And then he left a really, really, really long space. I'm not going to plug the whole space in there because it take up the whole damn screen. But at the bottom, it says, but I mean, you could add Dominic's Uncle Ray, referring to the SummerSlam matchup where the custody battle between between Eddie and Rey Mysterio, which was a great feud, actually, as absurd as it was. But I thought that was a really funny comment, and I wanted to give a huge shout-out to him. So huge shout-out to you, bro. I appreciate the comment. But I think that is going to do it for my fantasy booking of Survivor Series 2020. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What would you rather see Undertaker ride right up to the sunset after the Survivor Series matchup or one last matchup with The Fiend at the end? I think I'd end it at the Survivor Series. Have, have Undertaker be the sole survivor or, again, a big part of the win and let that be it. I think that's the perfect storybook ending. Hope to God that's really how it goes, but that's the best way to book it. And I think the SmackDown Clean Sweep would actually not be a bad idea. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.